In the year 2020, I started a podcast about movies. Some episodes occasionally focused on other media as well. As I dealt with threatening interdimensional beings, I eventually met my other self from another universe where all the stuff I talked about got delayed. As it turns out, the stories as me and my guests described them were presented very differently in that other universe. So I continued podcasting these recaps, which apparently sound like improvised reviews, to entertain listeners of that other universe while they waited for the new release dates. Some episodes even focused on content of years past that did not come out in that other universe for whatever reason. The year is 2022. The podcast is now bi-weekly, unless stated otherwise. My name is Steven Schinder, and you're listening to Delayed Replay. Hello listeners, welcome to another episode of Delayed Replay, that podcast where we talk about movies that got delayed in that other universe but came out on time in our universe, or on occasion, like on this one, we talk about movies that never did end up coming out in that other universe and got cancelled for whatever reason but came out here. Introductions are in order. If you've listened to the show before, maybe you've heard this guest. It is Haley. What's happening today? Hello, Steven. Nothing's happening too much. I'm just, you know, tired. <laughs> <laughs> like always. <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully, the day is almost over, at least from our point of view. I'm sure in some other time zone, the day is beginning or something, which probably sucks for them. Couldn't be me. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie we're talking about this time is the live-action Marvin the Martian movie, which came out October 7th, 2011 in our universe. I suppose I could have done this episode for like this movie's 10th anniversary last october instead oh, yeah. instead of like that k9 episode uh, mm -hmm. which is funny because there's a k9 in this but anyway um for those of it who listened to last season you know that in our universe there were some space jam sequels and spin-offs but they have like the memory erasing feature which is why some people forget about them this one doesn't even have that it was just straight up forgettable in my opinion um, yeah honestly i yeah because this came i was what like 12 or something when this came out like i like I, I legit forgot about it until you're like oh hey remember this movie that came out like in 2011 i was like Oh yeah, I remember seeing that in like theaters and then never again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it was that period of my life where I felt like I had to see every movie at that time in mm -hmm. 3D. Um, oh yeah, e the 3D craze. <laughs> yeah, even when the 3D didn't really add much, like more often mm -hmm. than not. So yeah, that was kind of a waste of money back then. I was just, like almost 17, yeah. Like, this was a Christmas movie that came out in early October, which is kind of weird. Yeah, so I guess we'll begin by, uh, like, what are your overall thoughts on the Looney Tunes franchise? Like, do you have any favorites or anything? Okay, well, I remember, like, two distinct things about the Looney Tunes. So apparently, when I was, like, a baby, um, my like, the nursery room that I was in was all Looney Tunes themed. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, um, so there's that. And, um, I just imagine it's like baby Looney Tunes and yeah, there's like Yeah, pretty granny. much, yeah, like Tweety Bird with like a diaper or whatever and like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on the wall, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, I remember um, my my dad bought like this Wile E. Coyote plushie with a diaper to give to me when I was like a baby and my mom and my grandma like hated it, apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I remember that, um, just like, just the Wile E. Coyote and the, the Roadrunner in general, you know, those were like... My dad was always like making like Wile E. Coyote references, like, you know, just like, oh, the Wile E. Coyote never gives up, even if he like, you know, blows up on the side of the earth. And I'm like, thanks, Dad. That's that's really inspiring. Cool. It's very encouraging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And then I also remember the the Looney Tunes animated show uh, from Cartoon Network, like not like the not like the old, you know, cartoons, but that that new the newer version 
um what like 2010 or something i don't know is is it the um, one where they're living in the suburbs yeah yeah that one yeah that one is my favorite like yeah I, it's pretty great honestly <laughs> yeah like i love how it feels like a sitcom like seinfeld <laughs> like, like it came out around that uh yeah that came out like may 2011 so f few months before this but yeah that was like in that era where Cartoon Network also put out Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which yes. is like my favorite iteration. Like yes. I was just <laughs> loving how they were reimagining these things at the time because it didn't yeah. feel like the same old thing to me. I think actually, hold on, because okay, when did when did the Looney Tunes come out? Was it in like twenty? Because I remember they also did a um like a revamped like Thundercats. I think around the same time. It only was on for like oh, one season. Yeah, um, th that one that one was great. That, that came was, out. Oh, I was so disappointed when they canceled it. I was like, what the hell? For yeah, it, it aired from 2011 to 2012, I think. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've tried watching the original Thundercats. Um, it's a little hard. Yeah, lie, like yeah. <laughs> within the last year and a half. Like I started like a almost a year and a half ago and like I would watch it on and off and then one day I realized holy crap i'm only 23 or 24 episodes in and it's almost been a year and a half okay yeah. i'm gonna give up on this it's time I, to I throw can't. in the towel yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more. But, like i might rewatch the 2011 show someday but yes yeah i rewatched it a couple years ago and it still holds up like pretty well like i you know it's, it's just, i'm just i'm sad that they discontinued it like it was yeah. good <laughs> yeah they need to bring it back I, i'm still salty that they put out the more recent version, Thundercats Roar, which don't, just looks no, cringe. Don't, don't no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. You're not allowed to mention that. I. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> I like. Yeah, it doesn't exist in my mind. Like I remember seeing like a like a teaser for it in the art style, and I was like, "Come on, guys! Like this is like it's like okay, so you know like you, you just exit out of the window and then." Yeah, your I, was laptop. Like, I was like disgusting I, I won't look at it no but like oh do you remember like so like obviously there was like the original like teen titans right i was like a big teen titans fan yeah. when I was a kid i watched that show a lot and then the teen titans go came out you know like many years later and i was like what is this garbage what yeah is this? and that's like the same thing that happened to thundercats like yeah they, they it good, really is yeah they made a good revamp in like 2011 and then they they, they shit on it in like later years and i was like what are you doing <laughs> yeah, that that 2003 Teen Titans cartoon is what got me into DC pretty mm -hmm. much. Like it was the first superhero show that I followed uh, like very frequently and m like in recent years my favorite iteration of the Teen Titans has been the Marv Wolfman comics from like the 80s and some of the 90s like that that's my favorite iteration and it inspired young justice which is my favorite a dc cartoon yes. I, yeah oh man i i think i thought i didn't see any other seasons uh or like the newer seasons but i remember when it when it was airing on cartoon network i watched it um and it was like really good i liked it a lot um yeah that was like around the yeah. same era yeah yeah okay 2011 we gotta go back cartoons come on <laughs> yeah like everything in the world was better in 2011 uh no and probably not everything probably but not anyway. everything. Yeah, remember, remember in 2012 when people thought that the world was gonna end because of the mayan calendar and stuff like that yeah we made, we made a movie about it too <laughs> yeah also throwback to june 6th 2006 when one of my classmates uh just said out loud in the presence of our teacher he yelled out it's 666 we're all gonna die yeah <laughs> <laughs> like the devil's numbers <laughs> yeah the, the, that was pretty funny honestly yeah like i said the 2011 looney tunes show was my favorite and i also grew up with space jam so and there's also that weird wb cartoon lunatics unleashed which I don't know if it's aged well, but I remember at the time that felt like it was trying to be like Teen Titans and it was like descendants of the Looney Tunes and they had like superpowers. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Um, I don't think so. What, yeah. what was it called again? It was, hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's called Lunatics Unleashed. Okay. No, I'm, I'm like actually very curious. What is... Yeah, they're trying to be like dark and edgy. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I should know this, but I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I saw this. Also, I just want to say when I typed it into the search bar, the other, the other things are Wattpad and TPNR. 
<laughs> that pop up right under this the original so yeah i'm not gonna look at that anymore but okay cool <laughs> <laughs> We've tried reinventing the brand in different iterations over the years, I guess, but uh, often try to go back to basics. But yeah, this Marvin the Martian movie was such a weird detour, I guess. Like, I guess they gave up on ideas for the Jam movies uh, for a while and then decided, oh, let's make a Marvin the Martian movie. And they did this thing with Mike Myers voicing Marvin the Martian. Uh, what'd you think of that casting choice? I mean, I, I think I only really know Mike Myers from Shrek. So I like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh boy, Shrek is, is the Martian? Cool. Um, yeah, but, I mean, you know, Shrek I... kind of looks like a Martian. Yeah. Wow. I is that rude? Is that considered rude? <laughs> I honestly don't know. Like, the way Shrek looks isn't how traditionally ogres were illustrated prior to the creation of Shrek, I don't think. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think, I mean, you know, Mike, Mike Myers, when I understand, is, you know, like a comedy man, so I think, uh, I mean, I think it worked well. I mean, like I said, I, I hadn't seen the movie since I saw it in theaters, so I don't really remember, like, how the, um, the vocal performance was but you know i was also a kid so i was like yeah this is a this is a, a haha silly silly cartoon movie <laughs> yeah throwback to when i watched the live action cat in the hat with mike myers and i thought it was absolutely hilarious oh, i i okay i actually i've never seen that movie actually <laughs> but i have seen many gifs and like memes about it um especially the one with like him like like beating a pin like a pinata or something with like like the bat or whatever or oh like, yeah he's he's like trying to hit the kid with the yeah, yeah, stick because yeah, yeah, yeah. like he uh disguised himself as a pinata yeah and there's also that one meme where it's like it's not it's not like from the cat in the hat movie but it's like someone dressed up in like a cat in a hat suit and it's like and they're like they walk in the bathroom and they the cat in the hat person like turns around and like cracks a whip <laughs> on their okay yeah but that, that just reminded me of that very random, but okay. <laughs> He's really good in Wayne's world, uh, at least. But with Can the Hat, like lots of people really didn't like it. And honestly, it's been years since I've watched the DVD that I have. But like, when I think back on it, I think that would probably be a guilty pleasure movie, that Can the Hat movie. Yeah, I, I quite liked how Mike Myers did the voice. Here, like I feel like it sounded close enough, but you could also hear a bit of the Mike Myers isms mm -hmm. in there. I guess you could say, but thankfully more kid friendly this time. Like I guess they kind of learned their lesson. Like there, there are way too many adult jokes in the Cat in the Hat movie. <laughs> yeah, they were like, well, we gotta entertain the adults, you know, somehow too. They gotta just sit through this kid movie, <laughs> which I guess is how a lot of. Uh, you know children's movies work sometimes you know you go back and you watch things you're like wait a minute <laughs> right yeah it's like it, you watch the lion king and you gotta kill off the dad for the parents enjoyment i guess yeah you know get, get that like really gritty action in there <laughs> <laughs> the lion king is a gritty action movie changed my mind <laughs> <laughs> i mean it does have hans zimmer music so yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I don't think there were like, I mean, like I said, like I probably, I maybe should have like reviewed the movie before we went on, you know, the podcast. But yeah, I, I don't like, I don't really, re I don't remember anything that could have possibly been like, you know, like there weren't like too many disguise jokes. But then again, like I said, I, <laughs> I hadn't seen the movie in a long time, so my memory could be deceiving me. <laughs> yeah, you had to like skim some stuff online, and you're like, oh yeah, I kind of remember this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we open up on Mars, and we see Marvin uh, with his green CGI dog, K-9. There's, like, this explosion that I guess was Marvin's fault, and, like, the other Martians on there are mad at him, which is why he has to be exiled to Earth, and he's, like, really salty about this, uh, especially since, like, he gets separated from the dog here like they have like other martians look after him but mm -hmm. it's like uh it's uh, i kind of feel bad for him like being separated from his dog it's weird because i don't feel as bad for him when he's trying to like conquer earth or whatever like mm -hmm. what'd you make of all this yeah honestly like um just in general like marvin the martian 
like I don't know, was just kind of like a, like a character in the Looney Tunes cast that I was like aware of, you know. Yeah. So I was already coming into this movie with like not a lot of sympathy for this character, you know, <laughs> just, just to kind of watch to see what happens. So I mean, yeah, it was kind of. I th if anything, I felt bad for the dog <laughs> and on the Martian, but um, you know, actually, act actions have consequences, I suppose. So. And when he lands on Earth, it's like there are all these holiday lights, like it's almost christmas time i guess and he sort of gets this idea that in order to conquer earth he has to compete against santa claus which uh i i don't know like if you've if you're familiar with this but the plot sounded very derivative of an episode of invader zim uh, i don't know if you've ever watched that show but that that's, oh, is that the that's one my with jam the, the green dog or whatever yeah <laughs> Yeah, or, or the alien or whatever in like this dog suit or whatever. Uh, I haven't seen that show. Yeah, I, yeah. I... He he has this robot in a green dog suit. Yeah, okay, that, yeah, that's yeah. another similarity. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I never saw, it, but I remember in middle school it was like very popular, and I didn't know what the name of the show was or anything. I just saw people walking around with this like weird, like green looking dog, like, and I was like, yeah, okay. from Hot Topic. From. Yeah, from Hot Topic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like what all the edgy, like the edgier kids wore, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think you'd enjoy Invader Zim. Like the humor is cruel and absurd, but hilarious. Like it's, uh, I'm still upset that it got canceled back in the 2000s. Yeah, honestly, it like kind of reminds me, like the art style, because I've never seen the show, but it kind of reminds me of like Courage the Cow Cowardly Dog a little bit. Oh yeah. In terms of like. I don't know, maybe just because they're dogs, so, or, like, dog-shaped, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I could imagine a fan fiction crossover between Invader Zim and the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I think that would work. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and, like, they even have the same, like, the voice actor for Billy is the one who voiced Zim, so mm, they, okay. they'd probably have that obvious joke in there like hey you sound like me i sound like you mm -hmm. so you know something stupid like that yeah um, yeah i'd call it the zim adventures of billy and mandy or something i don't know um they gotta get you in in the cartoon network uh <laughs> the drawing board over there <laughs> yeah like cartoon network you've been going down the toilet ever since yeah. regular show ended like hire Time me hire yeah hire me <laughs> <laughs> This podcast, this entire podcast series is like your resume for Cartoon Network. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you know, as, as you should. It's just a resume of how many movies and shows I know about. For Santa Claus, they had Christopher Lee, which was kind of an odd choice, because I'm so yeah. used to seeing him as villain characters. But what did you think of him in this role? I just thought it was kind of strange, because it's like, you know... Obviously, he's a very, like, um, I guess more, I mean, from what I've seen of him, like, he does more kind of, like, serious roles, you know? Um, so, I definitely thought it was, like, interesting. I was like, huh. Okay, you know? <laughs> I, but I guess, you know, even Santa Claus has to have a little bit of a villain arc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it sounds very, like, you know, he does a whole... Ho, 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 but mm -hmm. in, in his very um, Christopher Lee sounding voice. Like, I feel like if I was a kid, I like if I was like a really young kid, I probably wouldn't have noticed that uh, it, it was that same actor who played Saruman and Count Dooku. But Count like, Dooku. yeah, but <laughs> like watching it as an adult, it's like, yeah, you could totally tell it's Christopher Lee. Like, yeah, voice is so iconic. I mean, honestly, I was just surprised they got him to be in this movie in general, you know? Because, like, okay, <laughs> you know, Christopher Lee in a Looney Tunes movie is just kind of funny to think about. Yeah, uh, apparently he borrowed the beard from, like, when he was playing Saruman. Like, I think this was around the time oh, okay. the Hobbit movies were being filmed. Mm, okay. He was just like, yeah, let me just yoink that and use it for my, my Santa Claus cosplay. <laughs> yeah, just, just saved <laughs> some budget there. Saved the studio $10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think The Hobbit was even distributed by Warner Brothers, so it would have been pretty easy, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Marvin uh, decides to try his own. He, he starts setting up shop in Antarctica, 
So, you know, obviously trying, it's that whole meme of like, you copy my homework, but make it look different. So it's not obvious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got like these penguins as his sort of minions. Like mm -hmm. what was this all about? I, I think, I think honestly, they just tried because this, you know, this movie takes place during like the, the holiday season, right? During Christmas and everything. So I think they just kind of tried, they were like, okay, well, what's like, you know, what's Christmassy themed? They're like, oh, the cold in Antarctica. And they're like, well, penguins are up there. And they were like, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Put them yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know around Christmas, like, like I do associate that with the cold because of how cold yeah. my heart gets from okay. not okay. being Okay, with... Mr. Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> So edgy, you're like, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> another Dr. Seuss reference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, he has these penguins like sort of mind controlled and doing his bidding and mm -hmm. they're like making these toys, but like, what'd you think of these toys that he tried getting them to make? Absolute garbage. <laughs> <laughs> like a wood ship or something. No child in, in 2011 wants to play with a wood toy ship. They want a Hot Wheels. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> or like a Nerf gun or something. <laughs> yeah, and there, there were some off-brand Bionicles that didn't yeah. look as cool. <laughs> <laughs> they were like wooden Bionicles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything made of wood. <laughs> but, I mean, that's kind of expected though, right? You, you mind control penguins. They don't have fingers, so like, <laughs> what are they going to make? Right, yeah. They, they have this funny sequence where they're like trying to put the toys together but sort of struggling because th they don't have fingers and yeah it, it's it's kind of a repetitive sequence but it, it sort of paints the point that marvin is just not well equipped with all this and he even like uh tries filming a commercial to see if that my boost interest but then the audience reaction is like very negative yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, like everyone was like starting to put up signs on their doors that said no marvin the martian toys allowed yeah <laughs> it's canceled right <laughs> and santa claus catches wind of this and he goes over to marvin to confront him um what'd you think of their reactions to each other here i think it's very much of like um you know because like santa claus just goes over and it's like you know it's santa claus he's trying to be nice and he's like you know hey man can you like stop and you know the martians just kind of honestly he was a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know so you know him being like you know basically fuck you santa claus is just kind of like okay wow i guess we're going we're going that way immediate rivals um so, you know, I think Santa is pretty justified putting him in a box and shipping him away <laughs> after yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really weird that he ships him to this kid, Max. Like, we kind of learn later on that his whole idea was he thought that this would teach Marvin a lesson. But yeah, we, we get this scene where Max opens up the box and gets Marvin for Christmas and thinks that he's a toy yeah this was kind of a weird turn for the movie i guess so what did you think of this um i don't know i i felt like it was pretty like uh like expected i guess or maybe maybe not like him like well hmm i don't know because like i don't know movies in in 2011 were weird <laughs> <laughs> just that the whole kind of like early 2000s to mid 2000s like we some interesting movies um but I mean, like, you know, in the context, it, it makes, like, sense, right, you know? Um, especially with, like, you know, I, guess I would probably, you know, especially thinking about it, like, you know, later on where the, like, the Max, the kid, also kind of learns a lesson or whatever, you know, he's given a toy that he doesn't, not, well, not even a toy, it's like a, a living organism, but, um... <laughs> yeah, it's like um, Toy Story, but not, but unfortunately. But not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's like, so it's like they each kind of, like, um, you know, kind of partner up and, and teach each other les lessons, right? Like, you know, Max to be more grateful and then the Martian to not destroy the Earth. Uh, you know, equal <laughs> equal lessons there. <laughs> yeah, so, like um, equal results, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, like, 
I guess maybe child me was like, oh, wow, that's exciting. But, you know, adult me looking back is like, I mean, that's kind of, that, that, that's predictable. <laughs> yeah, I, like the CGI for Marvin is very toy-like. But all these years later, I, I don't think it's aged quite as well as I thought it would back then. Um, like, I guess it's okay, but it could be a lot better, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and so he, like, for a while, he sort of persuades Max into joining him in this plan to, like, take over the world or whatever. Because, you know, Max is a kid, and, you know, when you're a kid on the playground, all you want to do is, like, take over the world because it looks cool on TV, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, the Martian definitely did a, um, a gaslight uh can't keep girl <laughs> boss move on him for sure yeah and just kind of rubs rub max into it but um i mean yeah like you said when you're a kid you're like oh yeah taking over the world is like obviously the best thing i can do with my time so let's do that <laughs> and th there is a moment where they do like some snowboarding and th this i guess it's supposed to be like a bonding moment between them but it also kind of doubles as, I think, a little reference to Skate Jam, which was the last Jam movie which came out uh, like oh, yeah. five years before this. Um, so I thought that was a nice touch. Um, you know, not a whole lot of Jam connections, but sort of keeping it in that universe, I guess. Yeah, like this is a thing that's related to it. Like, hey, did you do you remember this is <laughs> this is a thing? Like yeah. A thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so Marvin and Max, uh, okay, so I don't know how the penguins get here. Like, they never really explain how the army of penguins get here. It's just like they're sort of just there now to do Marvin's bidding again. Like, this felt like if they just didn't really give a damn and were just like, okay, we need to move the plot forward type of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Maybe they swam all the way, you know? Maybe they <laughs> they hijacked a plane or something. <laughs> yeah, like, the that sounds like something the penguins of Madagascar, Madagascar would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was also a fun show, too. <laughs> it, it was also really weird, because it felt like... Like, I, I remember when it aired, I wasn't sure if it was a show that took place between Madagascar 2 and 3, or if mm. it was, like its own universe like it was kind of weird they were like the timeline <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like the animation was noticeably different but not too yeah. bad i mean it's for you know it's just a television show so of course it's not going to be as like pristine as the uh um the movies you know yeah i mean for what it's worth they didn't make a simplistic 2d that's style yeah. like some of the other like dreamworks some, shows become. some other unmentioned cartoons <laughs> <laughs> like like it works for captain underpants because that's the style yeah. of the original books but for some of the others it's like it kind of feels like they're just there and mm -hmm. like the style doesn't look appealing to me so like i haven't checked them out really like like peabody and sherman or whatever it's called i haven't oh, checked yeah. out that show but yeah um yeah I'm back to the martian right? yeah so marvin the martian is like now that santa claus has finished up doing christmas stuff and is on a break we'll be taking him off guard and so they fly over to the north pole and santa claus is just chilling he's like lying on a pillow uh mrs claus is there as well what'd you think of the actress they got to play mrs claus here honestly yeah like once again i don't understand how they got like someone like angelina jolie like in the movie like a <laughs> <Yeah>. high budget <laughs> yeah know? like like what is she doing in this like in this children's christmas music movie about the looney tunes like i don't understand but you know i guess i guess you gotta actors gonna pay their bills too <laughs> Yeah, and they have Daniel Radcliffe uh, playing one of the elves, mm -hmm. and there's also like a Will Ferrell cameo, which I thought was funny because yeah, you know, well, that makes sense because it's like the elf, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's like the only actor that kind of makes sense in this movie. I feel like <laughs> yeah, it's like Daniel Radcliffe went from Harry Potter straight to this, and it's yeah. like that's kind of weird. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then he obviously went off to do other things too but yeah just like the straight like jump yeah, like, from that to that it was very like okay well you do what you want mr radcliffe yeah like other weird things like swiss army man <laughs> yeah he, he seems like he's basically santa's right hand man here mm -hmm. like um, the elf lieutenant or whatever the <laughs> second in command is you know yeah or lieutenant if you're from somewhere else okay. i guess <laughs> like uh, i've heard that pronunciation in um some doctor who audios so i i don't know like if it's a british thing i've never heard it pronounced that way that that has the same energy as pronouncing microwave as microwave who pronounces it <laughs> microwave <laughs> there was this one like meme or like this video like this this lady was making like mashed potatoes or something and she was like all right now we're gonna put the mashed potatoes in the microwave eh? and i was like why why are you saying <laughs> it like that just say microwave <laughs> yeah throwback to when i uh jokingly pronounced cowboy bebop as cowboy bebop <laughs> i'm sure you got a lot of angry like uh fans you're like no that's um, <laughs> actually that's incorrect you're 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 disrespecting my culture <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I it was on um my friend Dil my friends Dylan and Keon's podcast, Inevitable uh Classic Sci Fi podcast, where we talked about a UFO episode called The Quest Your Priorities and at some point I worked it into the conversation. Um mm. uh yeah, I was just being facetious and whatnot, but yeah. <laughs> Santa is really understandably upset that his vacation is being interrupted. Mm -hmm. And and so he sort of has to gear up and get the elves and all these weird sentient snowmen ready. Like, what did you think of this sort of battle sequence between these two sides? Honestly, okay, so the part where, like, Santa Claus has to, like, gear up, he puts on his, like, battle suit. I remember that distinctly. Because <laughs> I thought it was just, like the like the like the coolest and also the funniest thing when i was a kid i was like holy sh santa's going like mortal kombat style <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah and it's like a montage with mm -hmm. like some 80s style music <laughs> yeah like explosions that you're like where did they come from you know um that yeah i think that that was definitely like, the most like memorable part of that movie because i still remember that like very distinctly to this day like when you when you said like oh remember this movie like that was like the first thing I thought of I was like oh yeah and then I thought about the rest and I was like oh yeah that's right the rest of the movie <laughs> yeah and Christopher Lee has that intensity in his eyes that uh -huh. he he's able to convey like he means business here yeah he holds up his f***ing, like candy cane saber like a light sword <laughs> or light saber <laughs> it's great a light sword uh, I don't know. light sword what is, what is star wars <laughs> yeah the laser. star wars fans are gonna come at me i'm so scared <laughs> yeah laser sword <laughs> yeah laser sword <laughs> um yeah yeah he like uses the candy cane like a sword and marvin's like oh shoot this is more advanced than even my technology which yeah. is kind of weird to think about because yeah. he's from space <laughs> he finds a wooden stick and tries using that to his advantage because like his whole thing throughout this movie is like yeah wooden objects are top tier bro <laughs> and you know, like he's just completely wrong like the candy cane just breaks it <laughs> that's that was the moral of the story <laughs> of the movie you know this whole time right and, and max is sort of on the sidelines and he's like uh i'm not sure if this is fun anymore like yeah. it's just seeing all this mayhem like they're very explicit about how nobody is dying they're just like um Box unconscious yeah <laughs> yeah because you know it's a, a kid's movie you gotta keep it friendly um well like there are explosions and even when you explicitly see an explosion on someone like on one of these elves like mm. after the fire fades away it's like they just have the scorch marks yeah, yeah the, the scorch marks and yeah just being like we're okay or whatever but mm -hmm. yeah it's very in your face yeah they're like this is this remember this is rated pg there's no death it's all just pg only yeah and uh, this like max tries to step in and be like, wait, we, we don't have to fight. And Marv mm -hmm. Marvin is like, there's supposed to be a kaboom. You know that classic line. Wow, that was a good impression. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's 
I don't know. I kind of feel like his voice is one of those easy ones to do like i've heard another friend try um i think my friend zach who's been on this podcast before has done a pretty good marvin the martian but okay yeah uh put that on your resume <laughs> <laughs> you're hired yeah. <laughs> oh man can, can you imagine like trying to be a professional voice actor and you just have like i can do marvin the martian and that's then... like your only thing on there you're like i can i can do this and that's about it and they're like okay well we're not looking for a marvin the martian but you know thanks for coming in <laughs> and you're like wait no i can do i can do um i can do bugs bunny too and, and max is like don't you see christmas is about people not fighting each other like, like he kind of stumbles over the message he's trying yeah. to convey and marvin's like but christmas is over and santa claus is like christmas is never over and kind of goes into this whole spiel which yeah was, <laughs> what would you think of christopher lee's whole speech here i mean he kind of performed it like it was like something from like a shake like you know like a shakespearean uh <laughs> soliloquy just kind of going off um, you know, you know, good for him. You go, King. But <laughs> yeah, it's like forsooth in the beginning, Christmas was yeah. blah blah blah. Like it's and just we, we so gifts to show each other for appreciation and blah. Yeah. You know, you just kind of went on, and I was like, yeah, you know, it, it is very much of like you know the 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 highlight of like like that kid, you know, the kid movie where it's like, okay, we got to make sure we hammer in the message so they understand what's going on. You know, also let the parents know that this is good for their children and, and expanding their worldviews so let's just put, dump in a, a speech about you know the very very uh obvious uh you know meaning of christmas they're like how how obvious can we be and they're like got it <laughs> yeah and at the end of his speech he also says also other winter holidays are cool too yeah <laughs> <laughs> But like but Christmas is like what I celebrate, and it's like you know, <laughs> it, was, it felt very much like a, like a PSA, like hey, don't forget there's other things that exist too. But this movie's about Christmas, so you can forget about those. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, thanks. Any thanks, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I know it's like not a whole lot of representation of other holidays, but just the way it was tacked on to the end of that speech, I remember it made me laugh out loud in yeah. the theater. <laughs> like some of the laughs were like far and but we're like few and far between that's mm -hmm. the expression i was looking for i have um, mixed expressions all the time <laughs> yeah like um I, I was trying to think of an expression to butcher just now but i can't think of one at the moment i've got one i think i think at one time so the phrase is supposed to be like like cease and desist right i right. think i think I, I i like one time i was like saying something to a friend and i accidentally said cease and resist and i was like wait that's not what? That's, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mix I mix up like common phrases all the time. I'll like say things like backwards or like replace words by accident, and I'll like have a moment I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold up, that's not right. <laughs> right. But speaking of resisting, Marvin is unable to resist the holiday spirit of in course. this moment. Yeah. Um. He, he has that teardrop that turns to ice because mm -hmm. it's really cold out here and he's like i just miss my home and my dog and then uh, then that's when all of a sudden you see a ufo come down and like the other martians and his dog k9 mm -hmm. arrive and they're like feeling really bad about exiling him for a little mistake yeah, literally, like, like the perfect moment, right? It's like, oh, man, oh, boy, I wish, you know, my Christmas didn't suck. And then, the, you know, the thing that he wants comes, and it's like, I feel better now. And it's like, okay. Um, I did think it was kind of funny that, like, when they, when the, the other Martians came down and, like, kind of, like, you know, apologized for, like, literally, like, banishing Marvin <laughs> off their planet, they gave him, like, a lobster as, like, a peace offering, yeah uh, which like where do they get that like they don't have i'm pretty sure they don't have lobsters on you know marvin's like home planet so did they like go like steal one or like did they they pay for it how did they get the money you know well you know what they say the about ocean? water on mars there used to be some okay <laughs> <laughs> 
and, and yeah, like Marvin is like K nine, and you see like the robot K nine from Doctor Who very briefly, and he's like, "Not you," and he goes to like the his own uh, K nine, the green dog, and um, Max is like, "You know, this kind of reminds me of the Grinch and his dog Max." He, he's Marvin is like, "Wait, you have a dog? You share a name with a dog?" And he's just like sort of perplexed by this thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's like a little joke that kind of goes on for too long, but yeah, yeah, it's very much like how my sense of humor is. If I have, if there's a bit, I'll beat it to death until everyone's like, "Can you please shut up?" And I'll be like, "No." <laughs> yeah, and off to the side, you see Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern, and. <laughs> yeah. Next to him is Martian Manhunter, played by Doug Jones, a creature performer mm. here. Uh, you know, Doug Jones has played Abe Sapien in the Hellboy movies. Uh, he oh, was, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever seen Pan's Labyrinth, but he was I like have, the, yes. the hands... Uh, oh, the hands guy. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, Interesting. Huh. Yeah, so uh, Green Lantern asks him, friends of yours, and... Martian Manhunter is like, I'm not sure we're in the right universe here. And it, it's, it was really weird because, like, this was in the era where that Green Lantern movie came out, like, earlier that year and that mm -hmm. summer. And it was supposed to jumpstart this cinematic universe, but the movie bombed. And yeah, it was like, was this Marvin the Martian movie supposed to be like the next step? Yeah, in that? the resurgence like... to Green Lantern. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like Marvin, uh, Marvin, Martian Manhunter, <laughs> he, he looks like a mix of prosthetics and CGI, like uh, from certain angles, he looks good from other angles. He doesn't look like he's aged that well, uh, yeah. but like I've seen better, um, <laughs> but it was sort of a left field cameo, but it makes sense because Warner Brothers owns like adaptations of DC things. Um, a couple years ago, there was even some Looney Tunes and DC crossovers. All of them was a crossover between Marvin the Martian and Martian Manhunter, which was surprisingly good, actually. Like some, some of the crossovers of the Looney Tunes were really silly, but there were also some that surprisingly work. Like I think there was a Daffy Duck and Joker one. Porky Pig and it was like Lex Luthor and Porky Pig. Wow, I do not know. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> yeah, it was like such a weird combination. I, I'm like trying to look up what my thoughts were on that one. Yeah. Because huh, like okay. sometimes I forget what my thoughts were on certain comics I read a while ago. And yeah. <laughs> that's why I review and rate them so I can go back and be like, okay, what did I think of this one? Okay, so my review of that one was, I enjoyed much of the other DC meets Looney Tunes comics, but this was really going out with a whimper. Uh, <laughs> so I guess this was like the last one in that series or something. So mm. yeah, it's real weird. But yeah, I, I did kind of like that little Easter egg. It, it was funny, I think. It was very bizarre, but you know, the movie was already kind of bizarre to begin with. So like after the whole like literal, like literal war scene, right? Like the battle scene. Between like you know Marvin the Martian and I like honestly anything anything could have gone I, and I'm, I'm like okay yeah this he, largely makes sense <laughs> yeah and, and they even had Kangaroo Jack in the crowd for some reason yeah they were honestly like, just like how many how many characters can we just fit in this movie you know yeah it's like, just everyone, another everyone laugh look at the reference <laughs> yeah it's just another Warner Brothers thing yeah <laughs> like with the live action Looney Tunes movies you basically expect weird stuff like that's, this that's true yeah that's why they're loony haha -ha. um <laughs> banned blocked <laughs> no <canceled>. I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> jokes on you I don't have a twitter so <laughs> oh wow <laughs> Actually, that doesn't surprise me. I don't know why I acted like I was surprised. Yeah, when I wasn't. like <laughs> gasp. <laughs> yeah, it's like that meme where if someone has their mouth or their yeah, hand yeah, yeah, yeah. over their mouth. It's like, oh, I yeah, I can't remember which character it is, but yeah. Oh, it's from the it's the Star Trek meme, right? Like, 
Oh, it might be. I think yeah, it is. It is. It is. I don't remember who. Maybe it was like Captain Kirk or something. I don't know. I don't, all the Star, or the, all the Star Trek characters are kind of the same after a while. But, <laughs> wow, um, lots of Star Trek fans are gonna come after you. I know. I got the Star Wars and the Star Trek fans, but they're, they're the same thing, right? You know. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> okay, I think it's. I think it's the Star Trek animated series. Yeah, it's the Kirk animated one. With, okay, yeah, yeah, with his hand on his cheek. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, and of course, there's also the Captain Picard face palm. That's another classic. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, like basically, it's your typical happy ending. Like everyone learns a lesson, and Santa mm -hmm. reveals he sent Marvin to Max because he knew that hanging out with this wholesome kid could possibly change him. And I'm not sure if that is what. Well, I guess it kind of is, kind of is what changed him because Max ultimately tried breaking up the fight in the end, but it almost didn't work, which would have been yeah. a, a major <laughs> gaff on Santa's part. Uh huh. Instead of like, oh, shit, I picked the wrong kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then they pretty much copy the ET thing where yeah. Marvin has to go home, and he's like. I will always be in your heart, or whatever it is he says. And yeah. Max is like, will I ever see you again? And Marvin is like, well, it depends on what the movie makers want. And it's just, yeah, very meta and yeah. just flies away. And Max waves goodbye and he looks at Santa and is like, can I get a ride home? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very, uh, very, uh, you know, very predictable, which is fine. You know, it's a kid's movie. It's a kid. It's a kid's Christmas Looney Tunes movie. You know, I wasn't expecting it to, to break any barriers or anything, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I guess the, with them ending it, like, you know, with the margin being like, oh, you know, it depends on what the movie makers like. They were like, oh, haha, -ha, what if we did a sequel like JK and Les, you know. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, and it took them nine years to make another one of these with Space Jam, a new legacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or not nine years, ten years. Ten years, yeah. They were like, hey, what if we remember the Looney Tunes franchise? What if we use that again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> During the end credits, there are like animated sequences of like some of the characters doing ballet. It's yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> For some reason. The penguins were in there too, I think. Yeah, the they were. In ballet. Some of them were even like gardening, like like, but it was like they were like gardening snow. So like, yeah, it was very strange. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty weird that Max's parents were never shown, like wondering where their kid was. Yeah, they're like, oh, f the parents, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I think about it. How long? Okay, so how long was Max gone for? Like, how many how many days was this was like this journey? I feel like it was like. I want to say like two, but like, you know, time is a, time is a weird construct. So who knows? They fly there, but for yeah. some reason they do this montage where it makes it seem like it takes longer than you would think. Like It takes like years to get Like, there. like you see the sun <laughs> rising and setting a few times. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah. But I guess, I guess, yeah, Max, Max parents just like, oh, well he ran away because we didn't get him that, that Xbox, you know? Yeah, it's like the opposite of Home Alone. The The kid goes somewhere else for Christmas and the parents stay home and don't notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, anyways, yeah, our child, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's like big yikes, really. But yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a silly movie, I guess. Well, I guess we pretty much covered, like, I don't know. Was there anything, like, notable about the music or what? Um, not that I can remember. I just remember, like, um, because, you know, it was a Christmas movie, so they had, like, some, like, you know, some Christmas covers, you know, from kind of, like, pop bands and stuff like that, but, like... Yeah, like, you had a cover of Jingle Bells by One Direction, which were very popular at this time. Yeah, I, I also, you know, like, like I said, there are lots of strange, like... A strange, you know, collaboration of, like, different people in this movie. Very bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess, unless you have anything else to say, we could go into final thoughts and scores out of 10 a unit of measurement. Um, I mean, like, you know, like I said before, it was honestly, you know, it's just, like, it's very forgettable. 
Um, <laughs> I think if I was being generous, maybe like a four out of ten, you know, because it didn't like, <laughs> didn't do anything. That's just me being like extra nice. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know. It was just kind of a kind of a weird movie that I you know totally forgot about. I saw it once in theaters when it came out, and then I was like, I right, cool. I'll store it away in my in my brain and never remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, four out of four out of ten uh, socks. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he gets like socks as well as his presents. Yeah, mm -hmm. thinking like the stockings, you know, like the like the Christmas stockings. I got the socks. Oh I right, okay, yeah. Socks, but yeah, I mean that works too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost it's kind of a guilty pleasure movie, I guess um but it's like really generic and really derivative there's not like a whole lot um so i i guess for me this one is like a 5.75 out of 10 candy canes mm. are they are they sharp are they like sword candy canes are they sharp or are they regular candy canes yeah are they they're mini candy canes <laughs> yeah there's there's like five of them and uh an, an additional sixth one that has a quarter of it bitten off. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that'll do it. Thanks for being on this episode, Haley. Uh, like, it was really cool marching for Marvin the Martian, I guess, because <laughs> okay. we're in March. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> great, 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 uh, great connection. You've connected the dots. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> I was going to make a self-deprecating joke there, but I'll just move on. Uh, where can people find your stuff? Yeah, I, I only have an Instagram, so you can follow me at Dancing Dinos Delirium. That is a underscore between Dancing and Dinos and then a, a period between Dinos and Delirium. Very, uh, very long name, so, but yeah, I do cosplay on there. Um, don't really post too much, but, you know, once in a while I'll, like, post a picture, but yeah. It's kind of that's kind of the only place you can find me <laughs> right yeah and sometimes you'll like post updates of like what you're in the middle of making yeah yeah i haven't i haven't done that in a long time because i got sidetracked again <laughs> 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 i have very very bad project management i'm like oh what about this this thing and then like i never and then i like i let like another costume like sit in the corner like mother please work on finish finish this and i'm like <laughs> i shall not <laughs> yeah so i'll link those in the show notes as usual and people can find me at steven schinder on instagram and twitter steven schinder storytelling on facebook you can find my fantasy horror comedy novel lemons and like rain uh, it's on amazon go to stevenschinder.com for more info and keep an eye out for any news on the next book trespassing through the visages uh which should be coming out later this year just got to get other things in order first and you can also email this podcast at delayed replay podcast at gmail.com let us know your thoughts on mars i guess <laughs> <laughs> And you can also find me on Yes Shift. It's a podcast I do with my dad where we talk about the progressive rock band Yes. We're having a guest on the day that this episode comes out, I think. Uh, it's former Yes keyboardist Oliver Wakeman. That one's going to be live on our Facebook at noon Pacific time uh, on that day, March 26th. And you can also... Uh, I've appeared on Mr. Multiverse's patreon show titled the requalizers um, more recently we've talked about what if there was a sequel to a nightmare on elm street that came out today and ignored the other sequels uh so he, he had another friend on there as well so th yeah that was fun and i was also recently on intergalactic peace coalition uh, over at the fandom empire youtube channel well, in that other universe, anyway, uh, the other me reviewed the Batman as it came out uh, this month in that other universe. And it yeah. sounded kind of different from how we described it here, but still, like, really awesome. So, yeah, people in that other universe can check that out to Intergalactic Peace Coalition. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything from me. And the next episode of Delayed Replay will be about... 
Shazam Fury of the Gods. So without further delay, have a good day.